Welcome to day two of our Advent devotional series. Today, we're looking at the question, where can you get this living water? Our reading comes from John chapter four, verses 10 to 11. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Christmas is a time where we're constantly being sold the idea of the perfect gift. A gift that might be just exactly what a loved one wants, that will enhance their life in some way or save them precious time or entertain the children for hours without squabbles. They're gifts that promise much but sadly don't often deliver and we're left feeling like it was all just a little bit too good to be true. Well today we're looking at an account from John's Gospel chapter 4 where we meet a woman who was offered the most extraordinary gift that promised way more than she could imagine. It wasn't for Christmas, as far as we know it wasn't her birthday, she didn't go looking for the gift, in fact she didn't even know the person who offered her the gift. She was just going about the daily mundane task of collecting water from a well. But at the well she met a man who made a simple request, he asked her for a drink and a conversation began. But soon the man turned the request on its head, suggesting that perhaps she should be the one who was asking for water, a different kind of water, instead. She's perplexed. She asks questions that reveal her confusion, and then he offers her the most extraordinary gift, living water. Everyone who drinks this water, he says, perhaps pointing at the well, will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The man is offering not just to quench her thirst for a few moments in the heat of the day, but he offers life-giving water. And that's picture language for life as God intended it to be, where we live in relationship with him forever. The man offers her eternal life. Imagine that. She just pops out for some necessities and she gets offered the gift of eternal life but it's a stranger offering it to her. How does she know that he's not just someone with the perfect advertising patter who's offering you the perfect gift and when you open it up, it turns out to be just not perfect. Surely this offer is too good to be true. And so in the middle of their conversation, she asks a great question. Where can you get this living water? And I find it exciting to trace her growing understanding of where she'll get the gift from, or rather who. You see, she starts off by just seeing him as a man that culture dictates she probably shouldn't even be talking to. And then you hear her confusion, perhaps even her derision, as she asks him if he's greater than Jacob, one of the fathers of the faith. And then he gently shows her that he knows more about her than she might imagine. And she realises that he's a prophet. And then later, as she says she knows that the Messiah, the promised one, is coming, he then confirms what she perhaps possibly begin, is beginning to dare to dream. I who speak to you am he. And then her complete understanding is summed up by those that she brings to meet him who declare, this man really is the saviour of the world. You see, it's who is making the offer, who is giving the gift that makes all the difference. The greatest prophet, the Messiah, the promised one, the saviour of the world, she sees it is Jesus who offers her eternal life. And therefore it's not too good to be true because the gift comes from God himself. And I love how this account relates to us because the offer made to her is the same offer that Jesus makes to us too. And her story gives us such hope because she was far from sorted. Her home life was complicated. Her friendships were strained. She knew she wasn't living right. But Jesus puts his compassion for her before social convention he initiated the conversation with her. He was determined to persevere even when she seemed dismissive. He saw her guilt. He saw her sin. He gently told her he knew all about it. And then he offered her the gift of eternal life. Fully, abundantly, completely. And likewise, he sees us. <laughs> he knows all about us. And he came into the world to offer each one of us that same gift of eternal life. Where can we get this living water? 
His name is Jesus, the Messiah, the Promised One, the Saviour of the world. <laughs>